What if we could inject more creativity into the decision-making process? What if we could find better solutions to challenges that have plagued our communities for years? And what do monkeys have to do with the Pentagon and homelessness? <laughs> Let's start off with the monkeys and the research around monkeys and their creative decision-making process, which finds that discomfort and uncertainty spur better decision-making and greater creativity. Then today, I want to apply that to problems we've faced at the Pentagon and how we applied that research there, and then how that has equally worked well in the homelessness challenges we've faced in the city of Fort Lauderdale. And lastly, I want to leave you with a couple tools how you can apply this in your own lives. Yale University has done some fascinating research on monkeys, and in one experiment, they had two buttons, a red and a green button. The red button provided monkeys with rewards 80% of the time, the green button 20% of the time. The monkeys quickly figured this out and began seeking their reward. However, the researchers interjected a degree of uncertainty and discomfort into the problem by switching the buttons. Now the green button provided rewards 80% of the time and the red button 20% of the time. The monkey's prefrontal cortex began activating dramatically and for sustained periods of time. This matters because the prefrontal cortex is where the majority of our problem solving, creativity, and logical thought occurs. As a result, the monkeys were able to figure out that the green button had the greater reward. For you and I, this applies equally. If we can interject a degree of uncertainty and discomfort, we can fully engage the prefrontal neocortex, solving problems more effectively and more creatively. How can we do that? That weird restaurant that your significant other keeps mentioning to you, go to it. The book your aunt gave you that you stashed in the bookshelf, read it. The coworker that has clearly differing political views than you, talk to them. Here's how we applied that research at the Pentagon. Living in New York City on September 11th, 2001, and witnessing the terror attacks, I was overwhelmed with a sense of frustration, anger, and ultimately uncertainty about how could I possibly help in a very small way to prevent attacks like this from happening again. Years later, after years of intelligence training, I found myself at the Pentagon, working on a small task force, and our work slowly began to wrap up in this task force, and I was confronted with a feeling of uncertainty. What was next? How could we contribute further? Around that time, a Marine major on our task force came to me and said, there's a, another department here that is short-staffed. Specifically on the weekends, they don't have the bodies they need to carry out their key functions and mission set. So we started a dialogue with that department. We started hitting red and green buttons, both in the midst of our discomfort and uncertainty. Them around their uncertainty, how would they complete their mission set, and us around what could be next for us. Ultimately, we came to a solution of offering reservists like myself who worked at the Pentagon during the weekends to supplement this department's staffing need. And ultimately, we ramped that up to 40 reservists supporting this department, not only on the weekends, but also on long-term term orders, helping them achieve their mission set. Unwittingly, I applied this same research to homelessness in the city of Fort Lauderdale. For years in the city of Fort Lauderdale, there was a growing downtown homeless encampment with about 100, 120 folks living in downtown Fort Lauderdale. For years, the city had tried different solutions. 
evicting those in the encampment, calling it a public health hazard, getting some mental health counseling. None of this worked. As I was watching this unfold and watching what I thought weren't the greatest of solutions, I decided to run for city commission in the city of Fort Lauderdale. And by 55 votes, call me Landslide Sorensen, I was elected. <laughs> I was elected, but I had no idea what to do. What I did know is getting down there into the encampment would probably help me get better solutions. So with the city's help, I got a tent, a couple chairs, and a folding table, and increased my discomfort dramatically. Setting up my office, moving it from the city hall to the summer heat of the downtown encampment, I not only felt a dramatic increase in discomfort, but so did my new friends in the encampment. They would oftentimes just tell me, what are you doing here and why? <laughs> I thought that myself, and then a third group of people thought that as well, and that's the business leaders, developers, lawyers, neighbors in the city of Fort Lauderdale that would meet with me in the steaming hot encampment to talk about whatever they wanted to talk about, the regular city business. Inevitably, in all those conversations, me with the members of the encampment, me with the members of the community, we would all start hitting red and green buttons, not knowing exactly what would work, but all of us clearly uncomfortable with what was happening. We started realizing that the key to this was finding more long-term sustainable housing. And as we thought about long-term sustainable housing, business leaders that were equally uncomfortable in the midst of sitting and talking in this encampment started dedicating resources to that end. Now, another challenge we faced in the encampment was I'd interact with members of the encampment, and then sometimes I wouldn't see them for two or three weeks. And they'd come back and they would share with me that they had been arrested for a nonviolent misdemeanor, had gone to jail for a few weeks, and were now back at the encampment. What a waste of resources, I thought to myself. And as I talked to the Fort Lauderdale Chief, Chief of Police and Chief Judge Tudor in Broward County, we all felt so disappointed with what we were doing as a society. And so led by the Chief of Police and the Chief Judge, came up with a better solution. The first in the state of Florida community court. What happens at the community court in the same city hall that I left to go down the encampment, now every Wednesday, a judge presides. And the judge hears cases of homeless individuals who committed nonviolent misdemeanors. However, they are not sentenced to jail for a couple weeks. Their sen sentencing instead is this. Look around the room at community court. This is now your case manager. This is now the person who's going to help you find long-term housing. This is now your drug addiction counselor. The members that come into community court leave with real solutions to address the underlying systematic challenges they face. And not only that, but they pledge to come back to mentor future community court participants. As a result of all of these efforts, we have cleared the entirety of the downtown encampment. Those individuals are now in a long-term affordable housing with wraparound case management support. They're in job training programs, all because we felt, as a community, uncertain and felt a degree of discomfort. So I implore you all, as you go through life, seek the discomfort. And as you address problem sets, remember DISC, 
Define the problem. Increase your discomfort. Get out of the office. Go into the problem set. That will spur creativity and create beautiful solutions. Thank you.